we're back. Again. For the third time. This is number three? Three. Three. Number Podcast three. number three. Do it for Dale. <laughs> so what's happening out there, guys? Hope everybody's had a good weekend. It's crappy here. The snow. We got three and a half inches of snow here last night. Uh, it was more like five. You might no. just be more used to three, three and a half anyway. trying to keep my temper down <clears throat> so uh what do we got going on this week june bug you got anything you got uh on your mind um a lot actually like what and not oh god it's hard to tell what you're gonna say now well we're not gonna go into all of it but uh, i can tell you're grumpy i can tell you're grumpy today you've you've been in a mood what's going on We drove all the way to West Virginia last night in a snowstorm. Right. To go see our buddies from down in West Virginia. I don't which I was mean, good. I mean, I said we were going to do it. We're going to do it. It's just a little bit, little bit to do on a, uh, on one night. You know, three and a half, four hours down there, and then three and a half, four hours back. Don't be a puss. Into the snow. It was worth it. We almost died six times. No, we didn't. When you're driving. No, that was when you were driving. <laughs> you drive like a grandpa. You Literally, it takes us twice as long to go wherever we're going when he's driving. I can't stand it. I have to finally just tell him to pull over and let me drive because he's so slow. It's terrible. And he always gets lost. Did you lost. die? All right. So, let's see here. I've seen this weekend that... Um, Detroit Hood TV last night announced on our way home, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm talking to uh, Mike Assad with Detroit Hood TV. And I started asking him some questions about mini bike stuff, and that somehow, I don't know what was going on in his mind at 3.30 in the morning, but all of a sudden he drops this $10,000 uh, 32-car shootout to back into Milan. Oh, Detroit Hood TV did? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see that? He posted at like 3 in the morning. Well, I know. I was I've, driving home. Well, I figured you would check it out today. What have you been doing today? A lot. Like what? Packaging up freaking 15 orders. Man, I feel like you've been on some freaking... You're on some girl drama. I know you are. What I know. Are I'm about? telling you, I know there's girl drama. I don't know what you're there doing. There's no girl drama. All right. So Detroit Hood TV has got this 10 grander coming up. I don't think they've released a date yet, but uh, I'm pretty excited about that, and uh, we're definitely taking the Nova to that. We're going to try and take the S10 if if it's running. Just have to see. Let's see if you blow it up again. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I see. Uh, I seen uh, JP Delisi said, "Lock me in, Black Jesus." So that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I'd like to race against that car. I'm sure Enoch Ball will be up there with the Firebird. He was up there the other day when I had the Nova up there. That's a good surface for street type oh, yeah. cars. Um, not oh, necessarily yeah. the ones that usually run at Milan, like the no ET cars that are used to like glued tracks. Yeah, you're not going to get a hold of like that. more for like street racers. And I think, yeah. I think uh, with $10,000 payout, track throwing in a couple grand. Um, that'll probably fill up pretty quick. There's going to be some players in that. Oh, yeah. The There'll real be. street race cars are going to come out of the woodwork for that deal. I'll bet you they pull cars from – I know they're going to pull cars from Chicago, may pull some cars from um, New York, Maryland. Yeah, um, I don't know. we just have to see. But The mid-Atlantic I guys mean, are always I there's plenty of freaking cars in Michigan to fill the list up. Oh, they all come out. You absolutely. Know? So it just but depends who locks in first. I know we're going. We're brand two cars. I, I guarantee you that. So we got that going on. And then I see uh, the streetcar brawl also announced uh, today or 
Yes, no, I think it was yesterday. Maybe it was today. The streetcar brawl is also going to do a 32 car back into the track, going backwards. Ten thousand dollar shootout, two hundred fifty dollar buy in. That's at US forty one, right? Yeah, Morocco, Indiana. So that's coming up. I don't know if they've released the full details on that yet, but if you get on Facebook and you do a search for uh, streetcar brawl, Morocco, Indiana, US forty one. I'm not sure what the page name is. But Derek Clem, C-L-E-M is how you spell his last name on Facebook, is the go-to guy. Uh, he and Curly, uh, Michael Langmire. Uh, I'm pretty sure they could uh, lead you to all the information that you need on that. And I'm not sure what the date is. I didn't have that in my notes. But I just wanted to mention it here on the podcast because there's some really, really good street-style back into the track virgin asphalt races coming up in 2019 so i'm pretty excited because i'm going to get to race a little bit this year with the nova uh john molina's got my intake done yeah what are you doing there are you doing two barrel or uh two barrel conversion a two barrel conversion because 283 doesn't need a whole lot of air no no it doesn't Look, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to – the surface up there won't take a lot of power. So we're doing a two-barrel conversion on a uh, Victor Jr. intake. And <laughs> John's got my intake done. Well, you'll see it probably posted up. We're going to – I think we might vlog a little bit. We'll go over and talk, talk to John and uh, maybe talk to him a little bit about what he does over there in his little garage. He's uh, – quite a little entrepreneur over there and yeah he likes to do raffles a lot and he <laughs> he's the raffle win. king <laughs> he likes to win raffles and i think he's a millionaire from raffles i think he is too i think this i think it's all undercover that he does this in his garage he's trying to keep it on the on the dl the but... irs is coming for you john <laughs> <laughs> so molina speedworks on facebook john molina Mr. Nitrous, I didn't think I'd ever get back into that nitrous game, but I didn't have a choice. <laughs> I didn't have a choice, man. It was peer pressure. Yeah, it's uh, one of them things, one of them weak decisions you make sometimes. It is a weak decision, I'm sure of it, since the old 283 is a stock block. <laughs> oh, God. You know, Nova ought to run pretty good on a little 50 shot, you know. Something like that, 75 oh maybe. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. I'll tell you, the previous owner of that engine sprayed the balls off of it. So, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> Dude, for real, it's a stock block, two-bolt main, stock main bolt, stock main caps. If you tell them, they ain't going to believe you. I s- I'm telling you. It's a stock block, stock two bolt main, stock main caps. Don't even have main studs in it. It's a grenade. The pin is about to get pulled. The pin's already pulled. I don't know. I don't know how it survived Ricky, but it's gonna have to uh, buy a couple more lives. Well, I mean, we're not gonna smash it right out of the hole. I mean, let's get that straight. We're not. I'm not putting this car together to go out and run on prep track or even what some people may call a no prep. I might run KD Dragway with it. But you're not going to go to the streetcar brawl. You're definitely not going to go to Michigan to the back end of Milan at the Detroit Hood TV events. You're not going to go up there and smash something right out of the hole with 200 or 300 or even progressing it. I don't think that's going to happen. Somebody's going to try. Somebody's going to try. I think Enoch Ball tried. <laughs> it almost cost him $100. Yeah. Uh, that was close. I mean, he got me by a car and a half, but I put two and a half cars on him until I put it in high gear. And once he got that Firebird straightened around, he jumped on the second kit down there, he said. And, but, I mean, I think if I had 200 – did I say that? There's a bunch of ice just fell off the roof out there. Jesus. If I had a 50 shot. I thought there were some Mexicans trying to break in here. <laughs> if I had a 50 shot on that Nova, I think I'd been good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's see. What else we got going on here? I wanted to talk about those two uh, 
10 granders. Uh, JJ's arm drop is still going on down at Liver, Little River in Texas. Um, there were some upsets second round. I was watching the live feed. Shout out to uh, Mrs. Turtle. Bobby. Mrs. Turtle. Mrs. Turtle. Yeah, she had the live feed going on down there. Oh, and, is that, uh, is that um, Hercules' wife? Yeah. Yeah, Anthony's wife, Bobby. Uh, <clears throat> she had the live feed going on down there, and there was some upsets second round. Um, it looked like Baller Coop was there. Yeah, Baller was out. there. He went out second round. He got loose. Um, Dang it, Baller. You're making me look bad, man. Come on. I, dude, I was on the live feed, and I was doing that thing. I'm like, there's my boy. Guaranteed money. Baller, left lane, PayPal ready, and he loses. See, that's I what give happens up. when you get so I give confident. up. Dude, when I was up there at Detroit Hood TV's Winter Shakedown the other day, every single, like, J.P. DeLisi rolls up there in his pickup, and I seen he had a picture of it, just had it off the dyno. I'm like, he's a player. I got 50 on J.P., and luckily nobody took my bet because he lost. It seems like every time I think I know what's going to happen, it goes the other direction. So about the opposite of what you think initially. But I just, oh, my God. It's been so bad lately. I don't even. I just leave my hands in my pockets when I, I go on the starting line. I feel the same way about when I enter a raffle. I've yeah. never won a raffle. I can't win shit on a raffle. I mean, I literally. And I know it going in, but I can't help myself. Yeah, it's just. This is the time. It's gonna. Yeah, happen it's gonna happen time. this time. Yeah. I got a feeling, and it never happens. Now, John Molina. I don't know how he does it. He's. He fucking cheats, dude. Illuminati or something. I don't know. <laughs> He wins everything. But uh, JJ's arm drop is still going on down there. This is Sunday night. We're recording this on Sunday night, and it'll probably release tomorrow unless Billy gets into some more girl drama. Listen, man, I don't give a shit about girls, okay? <laughs> right. So, um, unfortunately, it looked like uh, Precious had another mishap in zip tie. Again? Yeah. Stood it on the bumper, and she was racing Jason Cantu. I'll just be honest. I was hoping she'd run over his ass, but it is what it is. She stood it on the bumper. It looked to me like it went 330 feet on the rear bumper, dragging the bumper, and she was still beside him. She was, I mean, she was probably behind him a little bit, but from what I could see on the live feed, she was beside him to 330 feet on the bumper, dragging it. And I couldn't see what happened. I just know that she uh, crossed lanes and got into the wall on the other side. Bobby, from what she said during a live feed, she didn't seem to think it was real bad. But uh, the, the car's probably been damaged. That car's been crashed like six times or seven, maybe even more. I don't know. I feel bad for Precious because I know she takes a lot of heat online every time something happens to that car. But I know when it crashed at Cottonwood, uh JJ said that it needed a bump steer kit put on it, and he didn't have it done yet. And something happened there, a little death wobble, and she couldn't control it. And I, I noticed that he took took up for that. I mean, he said that was his fault, not Honestly, hers. Honestly, man, it, it don't matter how many times you crash your shit. As long as you get it back together and fucking get right back in the saddle. Yeah. Uh, that's what it's all about, just uh, getting back up. And, and I didn't again. see it, but I guess Brian Britt crashed Beetlejuice. Everybody, that's the nature of this game. I mean, you're going to crash at some point. Yeah, so don't build nothing super nice. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you want to race, S10. just build an S10 and don't paint it, you know. A love truck, a Mustang. Yeah, I mean, you can't have a, a super nice show car, no prep, or street race car. It's There's no sense in it, really. I mean, I'll tell you somebody, I mean, look at Boosted. <laughs> he tore that car to pieces. Oh, and that's a nice car. The more you race, the more you're going to tear it up. That's just how it is. Now, the one guy that does have, I think it's a pretty nice car, is uh, Boost 12. I mean, that's a that's a good-looking car, and I don't but hardly ever see that. A few yeah, times. I mean, but I don't ever see that car, like, primered and tore up and duct tape and shit he hanging off. He keep it clean. He keep it clean. They tans. They tans. <laughs> they keep them clean, though. So... Oh, I don't know. So they're they're still down there in Texas tearing some stuff up. Pretty cold down there. I think they're going to New Mexico next. But um, I saw Chris Sievert was there. He he lost second round. I seen him light the tires at about a hundred feet out in that Monte Carlo. There was some players down there. I knew. I tell you, <laughs> you go to Texas with an with an operation like that. You go to Texas to a big money 
any kind of money raced in Texas, and it's a dog fight. There's some stupid, stupid, fast street raced and no prep cars in Texas. In my opinion, Texas is the fastest uh, when it comes to no prep and street racing. So that's just flat out. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. That's just the cold, hard truth. Now, don't get me wrong. There's fast cars in Oklahoma. There's fast cars up in Missouri, um, Kansas City. There, um, <laughs> there's some monsters. The green monster, that, that fox body Mustang, that thing's an animal. Um, I mean, there's, there's some fast cars up there, but by and large, I feel like Texas. Texas has the most, I think, on, the, on that caliber. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's some states there that'll have a couple cars that are just really fast and could run or beat some of the Texas cars, but overall, there's just a lot of fast cars in Texas. So we're back. Yep, we're back. All right, that's a, break time's over. So uh, where were we? We were at uh, Little River talking about JJ and them guys. Um, just going through my notes here, some things that we came up with on our trip down to West Virginia to talk about. I know you mentioned that uh, some some news out of California. Yeah, um, I heard that the AV boys are done with street racing. That's straight from Lunchbox, and I I can't remember which one of them said, uh, yeah, we're building uh, our cars for radial and prep racing now, and that's just the best fit for them. That's what they said. Uh, I don't think they were trolling. They might have. I don't. I doubt they're trolling because it. I verified it with two of them. So hmm. that's un uh, unfortunate that they're getting out of it. But I can see maybe um, California laws being so strict. They're um, cracking down out there. I keep seeing videos of um, cracking down on car meets and just ticketing the hell out of people out there. What a shithole California is. Yeah. Beautiful weather. It'd be a hell of a place to have a nice. Uh, car meets and, and a good scene but evidently the fruits and nuts in california have just decided to completely annihilate the car scene out there well they did you see the new muffler rule you can't have an how can't, fucking queer is that what is it you can't have a aftermarket muffler on your car and change your gender but you can't change your muffler in california yeah are you serious yeah that's... screw cal listen they trump when you when you build that wall build it right up the California state line. Wall that shithole off. Let it fall into the sea. Let it happen. Screw California. I mean, I, I guess it's beautiful out there, but I wouldn't live there for nothing. Period. Piss on that liberal lunatic place out there. I can't believe people want to live out there. It's not freedom. No, that's not freedom at all when you can't even put a muffler on your fucking car. That's you know? retarded. Maybe that's why they're doing that. I mean, it, I mean, if you can't tag your car and go out and drive it on the street anymore, think about that. Think of all the hot rods out there that you can't. Yeah, I mean. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Somebody leave a comment in the, in the comments on this and tell us what the hell's going on in California. I haven't really looked into it. i just seen a bunch of memes. I don't pay attention to California, but. But when you told me that the AV boys are done street racing, that got my attention. And I don't know. It might just be that they're moving on to different types of racing and they've got families and they don't want to risk, you know, losing their stuff. It's It could be a lot of things. And I don't want to speculate, but right. that's just what I've heard. So good luck to those guys. I mean, they were as street as it gets. I yeah, don't... I mean, I, I used to watch videos of the gray mare doing wheelies on the street and that was always I always wondered how in the heck they got that car to run so good being a little small block Ford stick car it was just beating up on cars that it shouldn't have been yeah and yeah it was a nasty car and it was fun to watch they they always had really fast cars they had the Greyhound and they've got um, a couple other Fox bodies but so, guys, if you're out there, I don't know if the AV boys, any of them lunchbox, any of them watch this deal, but uh, good luck to you guys, whatever you guys are doing. I hate to see that happen, but I can definitely understand it given the climate out there with what's going on with police and, and laws and stuff in California. It's just terrible. Terrible. 
You guys better keep, take notes of what's going on in California because those liberal lunatics out there, they're trying to take over the entire country and run it into the ground the way they are California. And that's the first thing they're going to go after is your freedom, your rights, and your guns. Right down to the mufflers on your car. It's Let's get off this. I don't want to talk about politics, but that makes me aggravated. So, AV guys, they're done. They're, they're going to the track. Um, when you talk about street racing and, and real street racing, you know, one of the guys I think about is uh, every time someone says they're – Anything about real street racing, you think about Dallas-Fort Worth street scene, Lempy. And um, something I was thinking about, you know, I, people send us messages and talk to us a little bit about what's going on and what we think's going to happen. And, man, um, things change year to year, just like, you know, AV boys getting out of street racing. Um, people change depending on who they're hanging out with. They change depending on who they're sponsoring or who's sponsoring them. And somebody that... You know, I got to give a shout out to uh, Chris Collins, Limpy. That guy. He ain't never changed. He's, he's been doing never the same changed. thing forever. And it doesn't matter who he's around. It doesn't matter uh, who he knows, who he has connections with. Right. He's not out there trying to be something that he's that not. Dude, he's just doing it because he loves street racing. He's real. Listen, uh, he loves it. He lives it. Uh, he's as real as it gets. And you know, that was something I was thinking about on the way down to West Virginia is people who are real don't really change. I mean, they, they stay true to who they are, and that's something that Lempy's done. That guy has flagged the baddest street race cars on the face of the earth. He could have been on television shows. He could have done anything and everything that all those guys in 405 have done. I think he's been on TV before a couple well, times. Well, I, but... I, didn't, I didn't mean it that way. I mean... I'm just saying, I think he's been offered some things, yeah. and he's turned it down. And, uh, you know, I see him out there flagging races with guys that nobody knows, uh, little guys out there with uh, – it don't really matter what it is. I, Limpy would flag a race for imports if they come out there. He would flag a race for go-karts if they were out there. He would flag a race for mopeds if they were out there. The dude don't care. Uh, it doesn't matter whose phone contacts are in his cell phone. He's the same with us as he is the same with Chief and Sean and, and anybody else. I mean, he just doesn't care. Um, and I really think that that's uh, admirable, that the guy is still the same guy he's always been. He does a fantastic job down there in Dallas. I can't wait to get down there and race with him. Can't wait. That's That's the place to be, in my opinion. Uh, I love the pad, too. I love uh, Louisiana, but can't wait to go to Dallas. Yeah. I'd like to go to Kansas. We're going to Kansas City, too. I know they've got some good places to race. Um, yeah, there's some good places to race in Oklahoma as well. Yeah, we're going out there, too. Not on Soon television. We but Yeah, we're not talking about television. Don't let's, let's not get into that. I mean, we're not talking about – when we say we're going to Dallas and we're going to these places to go racing, it's not on camera. This is real street racing that we're, we want to do. And the reason I really don't care to be on camera, honestly, I don't have any business sitting beside most of those cars on the, at, at the places that they race. Um, and we know it. Yeah, I mean, now, if somebody's on a 28 or a 29 – on a real street, uh, I'll race pretty much anyone. But as far as like racing against Oklahoma or anything like that, it's, we don't have any business sitting beside those You're cars. You're talking about the guys on the show. Yeah, I mean, maybe Memphis, like some of their small tire cars, I could probably hang with those guys. But even then, you don't have a very good shot of even getting on the show if you win because they like to show. I mean, not Memphis guys, but like the, the people that run the show. Right. They obviously want to show that Memphis is. I mean, it's uh, the, fast. it's a television I mean, show. Yeah. If you win, you're you're probably not going to get shown on the show. If you lose, you're going to look like an idiot. I mean, it's there's not really much there for me. So. I mean, I'd rather just, just keep it real. I'd, keep it I'd real. rather go to Memphis and race off camera. I would too. Uh, you get more respect that way, anyways. And not and not disrespect anybody that's been on the show because there's been people that gone on that show and done really well. Um, but I don't know. 
when we talk about going street racing and going traveling and stuff, I hope everybody realizes we're not trying to get on television. That's not our point. I mean, I just want to make that clear. We just want to be true to who we are and the people that we run with. Um, we want to be respectful and we want to be respected and we're not trying to be somebody without doing something. We're going to go do it. Yeah. There's a lot. We of might fail. We might not do very well. We might get our ass cracked every time we, we line up out there, but we're going to be there. There's yeah. a lot of people that want to be something without putting in the work or, you know, going out and doing it for real. And that's where you get your head cut off when you go out there. Cause you're not going to go out there. Uh, thinking that you're going to do something and not be real about it because everybody you line up against in Memphis is real. Right. And, you know, that brings up another thing I wanted to talk about was um, <clears throat> just like you said, anybody on a small tire will set beside. We're not scared. We might get beat. But how, I mean, since literally, since anyone can be beat on the street at any given point in time, I don't care where you're at in this country. I don't care who it is. Uh, I don't care if it's Ball or Coop. I don't care if it's Chris. Um, I don't care who it is. There's always the chance they can be beat at any point, at any, any time. So how do you go about really determining who's the best? Because anybody can be beat at any given time. Just because, for example, just because you went down to, to the pad and uh, who, who, what was that guy's name you raced first round? Todd Spears. Todd Spears. Just because just you beat Todd Spears first round down there don't necessarily mean that we're better or we're faster. We just happen to beat Todd that round on that surface at that given time. So, in my opinion, you know, I think – just because someone gets beat or beats somebody else on one race doesn't make them the man. You know what I mean? It takes, I don't know, I don't know how many months or how many years it takes for somebody to be out there street racing to be considered real. But uh, I think a lot of it is determined by how you handle your losses. I mean, if you go out there, you could win every round. You, you know, you could be like Tyler DeSantis. You could be up here in New York just cutting heads off left and right, 18, 19, 20, and 0. And when you lose, if you go out making excuses and crying and making an idiot of yourself on the Internet, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't make you a winner in my book. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and that's something, you know, I understand that. I know I'm not the fastest, and I'm not going to be – ever be the fastest that I mean you can be the fastest at, on a certain night at a certain place but you're not going to be the fastest anywhere right you know and I think that in my personal opinion if you're out there and you're squaring up with somebody uh, on a regular basis and you're out there doing it I that gets respect for me, and believe me, I'm not one of these people that uh, believes in a trophy for everybody. I'm not like that at all. Believe me, but in my opinion, if you're out there racing on a regular basis, you're and and you're doing the best you can with what you've got. I believe that you should be considered one of the best out there. Regard, I mean, not necessarily the best, but you should be held with high regard. I should say not frowned upon because you lose every time you go out there. There's a lot of guys that go out there race a no prep King series and they get blasted first or second round every time, but they're still out there trying. They're still out there putting on a show, but I don't know. I just see a lot of hatred for people that go out there and they're trying to work their way up and they keep getting their head cut off first or second round. And I just hate that. That, that just, I despise that, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. Everybody's got to work their way up. Everybody's got to learn. So, and, an, and another thing that bothers me is the hatred on the hustle. You're not a real street racer unless you understand the hustle. Yeah, I mean. Everybody's got a hustle. Got Everybody's got to hustle someplace. You've got to embrace whatever, wherever you're racing, there's a different kind of hustle. Like right. you got a different hustle in Detroit. you got a different hustle in Memphis. you got a different hustle in you know, Oklahoma or wherever. People race a different way. And you have to make, when you go to these different places, 
you have to adapt and you can't just cry and say, Oh, I don't like the way they race. I don't like chase, you know, chase is a race. I don't like arm drop. I don't like flashlight. I don't like this or that. Listen, that chase is a race deal. That chase is a race deal. That's not just Memphis. They don't have that locked in down there. I mean, that's not the only place that chase is a race. They used to do it in Ohio. I mean, they used to do it. That was the way to do it before there was cameras. They're still doing it in Michigan. When you go to Detroit, it's chase is a race. Now that everybody's got a cell phone camera, you can see exactly, you know, how much somebody jumped by. You can look at the tire cracking. But, I mean, you know, 15, 20 years ago or however long it took before there were cell phones or whatever with cameras on them, I mean, you went by whatever the flagger saw, you know. And, I mean, that's why you have chases a race and arm drop. So. Right. So don't hate on somebody else's hustle just because Memphis is doing something and they're and they're traveling the country and they're doing well, just because they do chases a race. It, it's it's a hustle and there's no, they don't deny it. They don't try to hide it. It's their hustle. That's how they race. That's how they, that's how they uh, do well against cars that are, you know, sometimes a lot better than theirs or a little bit better program. Um, but guys, when you get on the internet and you're like, ah, I don't like Memphis, that chases a race crap. I hate that. I hate to see people hating on other people just because of their hustle. Listen, there's a hustle everywhere you go. There's on a the hustle. Street, yeah. uh, there, there's a hustle everywhere. If you want everywhere. fair, put your shit in the beams of the track. Take your shit to the track if you want fair. The street is not fair. It's never been fair. It's never going to be fair. I promise you that. If you think it's fair, <laughs> you're in the wrong business. No, it's, it's never going to be 100% fair. Um, it's one of those things where if you're going to Memphis or you're going to a, a, an event that Memphis Street Outlaws is putting on and you've got a bunch of people complaining about chases or race or whatever, you need to take advantage of that and try to embrace it and learn it the best that you can. That way you have an edge over everybody else. Right. The f- Complaining about it isn't going to do you any good. It just makes you look like an idiot on the, on the internet or a cry baby. Listen, everybody's got a hustle. Everybody's got a hustle. That's the street. That's the way it is. You better learn to love it and live it or just stay on the couch, stay on the sidelines, bet your money or whatever you want to do. But when it comes to street racing, there's a hustle. There's a hustle everywhere you go. Embrace it, learn to love it, learn to understand it. And in all honesty, the best street racers out there uh, I hate to bring it up, but I'm, I'm, I think I was planning on bringing it up anyway, but you know, just locally, um, probably one of the best people locally here in Ohio, not saying he's the fastest on the street, but one of the best hustlers. Who do you think? I don't know who, I mean, in my opinion, Craig Metcalf. Yeah. I mean, he gets in people's head, and he makes them make mistakes before they even. And he's not racing. afraid. And he's not afraid to uh, to go out on a limb and and take a and take a chance on something crazy. I mean, I'll give you an example. You know, when he took uh, Eric Manns in Boston, George, down to Clay City to run that day, that deal down there, that grudge race, he lost twenty five hundred dollars on that, didn't he? Yeah, he lost twenty five hundred to Eric because his throttle cable broke. Uh, his something on the linkage came his. off the carburetor. But, you know, one of the things I like about Craig, there's a lot of things I don't like about Craig, but one of the things I do like about Craig, and I'm not trying to suck a guy off because, you know, he and I aren't real tight anymore, but one thing I'll tell you that you guys need to learn from guys like Craig, you can hustle people online without cussing, without uh, insulting them directly anyway. He's always insulting someone, but it's always on the sly. You know what I mean? Uh, what I like about Craig is, uh, even though a lot, some people don't like him, I sometimes don't like him. Everybody's got something against somebody sooner or later. Somebody's going to do something that you don't like sooner or later, but I respect people that, that can hustle and Craig's a hustler. He can get on the, he can get on Facebook and he can aggravate you so freaking bad without ever saying a cuss word, without ever saying anything about your girlfriend, without ever saying about your mom or your dog or where you went to school or how many teeth are in your mouth. 
he can get on there and he can and he can hustle you in a classy way and make you hate him. <laughs> hate him enough to to take a race that's not in your favor just so you can shut him up. Oh, and I, I truly believe that he probably would have beaten Eric that day had oh, his throttle cable not broken or whatever. But it was just one of them freak things, you know. Uh, he got his ass handed to him down there on a freak incident. What did he do? I don't remember him crying. He no, paid he up. he never cried about it. He never cried about it. He took his lump. I mean, that was a bad one, too. That was a bad one. But he took his lump, and, uh, you know, he... he what can you do? I mean, you're going to lose. You guys got to learn how to take a loss, man. You got to learn how to take a loss. You can't cry about it. Everybody's going to lose sooner or later. Yeah, I mean, it, it sucks to lose, but don't hate on somebody's hustle just because you can't hustle it. If you don't like Chase's Race, don't go to Chase's Race events. Don't go to Chase's Race races on the street. Um, but learn how to adapt to other people's hustle but don't let them know that you're adapting. Don't let them know that you can out hustle them at their own hustle. That's the whole key to being successful at street racing, in my opinion, as far as the hustle goes anyway. I'm not talking about the car's performance, but I mean, just trying to get a race out of somebody like a one and done, make them think that you are not 100%. And sometimes that takes weeks and months I remember one time we were trying to hustle, uh, what's his name with the Camaro down there in Dayton? What's his name? I call him Caleb Gonzo. Caleb Miller. Caleb Miller. <laughs> He's going to watch this. He's going to think this is funny. There was one time, Caleb was talk, talk, talk for a long time. He's going to run that truck and he's going to do this. He's going to do that. And you finally did, you finally did get a hold of him. But there was uh, there was a couple of weeks there a year or so ago where I I literally had gotten on there like for a week and a half and was complaining about we were having transmission trouble and we and the trans brake wouldn't work and we were having a foot brake and this that and the other and it was all a hustle just trying to get him to line up. He didn't fall for it. He didn't fall for it. He never did bite on it. He almost bit on it, but um, you ended up going down there and. He sprung up out of nowhere one night and decided he wanted to call Billy out on Facebook for, for a race. And turns out he had a brand new set of big tires. How, how big were the tires on that car? I think there were 36 by 14. 36? 34, 14 30. or something. I don't know. 32s? I don't know what the hell big. I don't know nothing about big tires. He had, big. He had a brand new set of big tires on it. And he did get you the first pass. He did get you the first pass. We were, yeah, I beat him the next two times. We raced three times. I beat him twice. He beat me the first time off the trailer. Right. Um, I'm not going to make excuses about it. But, I mean, it's just one of those things. There's a hustle everywhere. There's hustle online. There's there's more hustle in street racing on the Internet than there actually is when you once you get to the event or the race. There's a lot because once you get there, it's time it's time to, to throw down, but you can throw people off in the weeks leading up to a race. By I'm not good at hustling. I'll be, I'll be straight up honest. I just I am. I just want to race. I don't give a shit. I don't care who it is. I would rather just race than talk about it, <laughs> and I'll lock in with somebody that I shouldn't just because I don't want to deal with all the bullshit and I don't want to talk on Facebook for days about it. Right. He don't want to be talked to death, and I don't want to. I don't want to either. But I enjoy. I sometimes I enjoy reading the stuff on the internet. I enjoy it because I can see through everybody's bullshit most of the time. I and I kind of know where everything's going before it happens. But it's interesting. It's interesting to sit back and watch what people do and, and what they say leading up to a race and see how it affects the outcome sometimes, you know, cause you never know what's going to happen. Anybody can be beat anywhere at any given time. That's just the way it is. But it's the beauty of street racing. That's, that's right. So respect everybody's hustle. Don't hate on somebody else's hustle just cause it ain't your own. Don't do that. I hate that. Just like, uh, you know, Chris Hamilton, one of his favorite, one of my favorite quotes from Chris is just show me where the freaking finish line is in the starting line. Show me the starting line. That's all I care. Tell me what the rules are and, and show me where the starting line is and let it go. 
So, I don't know. You got anything else tonight, Junebug? No, I think we should probably wrap it up here soon. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, I do I do have one more thing. You know, we were talking tonight uh, about maybe starting an online magazine to feature street race cars. Uh, and not just the ones locally. I mean, we could go to Michigan. We can go to New York. We can go anywhere. Just pay our gas, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not asking for that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I bought a... A hot rod magazine subscription your mom ordered it for me and the other day uh, i had two issues show up at once the first one i scanned through it and literally didn't see a single thing that was of any interest to me at all the second one i picked up i scanned through it pretty quick and um i'm, I'm just gonna say it man look 10 second turbo cars don't interest me at all no, I don't. I don't think that would interest me either. If you've got a, I mean, come on, man, ten second turbo cars. Look, I mean, I get it. It was a, it was like a seventy five or a seventy six Laguna Chevelle wagon, brown in color. No offense, man, but I mean, that's it, just it. Ain't getting it. No. It ain't getting it. I mean, I mean, maybe some of the old old fogies that are still hanging around that are way older than me. That, that still think a 10 second car is something to be proud of on the street and a 10 second all motor car. That's pretty yeah. good. You know? Oh yeah. But look, man, I mean, some of these magazine articles, I think there was a Datsun that was on like six, 17 or 18 inch wheels. Uh, I don't know if it was a drift car or what it was. I didn't, and, I mean, there's no, no offense to your, the cars that run 10, 11, 12, even 13s. I mean, everybody's no. got to start somewhere. We're not right. trying to, not we're down not trying to big dick anybody about anything. No, we're not trying down that on, on nothing. But I mean, if you make it into a magazine, yeah, a magazine, I mean, I, it, and I'm just saying it's a brown four door Laguna wagon. Come on, man. Tens? Tens. I mean, yeah, it's 4,500 pounds going tens, but my God, there's 4,500 pound diesel pickup trucks that eat that thing up. Yeah. You know? So we're, we're really starting to think about doing some like magazine articles on the, on the website. And I talked to a guy tonight from down around Dayton who I kind of look up to. He's a legendary street racer from here in Ohio, Garth Lightfoot. He's, building a uh, Ford Henry J completely front to back, top to bottom in his little two car garage behind his house. And he's building the chassis. He's building the engine. He's got the rear end up in it tonight. He said he, he's finally got the rear end painted and put up in there. He's been working on it a long time and uh, I'm really excited. It's not a Fox body Mustang. It is Ford pow powered uh, and it's going to be a street race and no prep car. So, I feel like there's a lot of interest out there. Uh, I feel like there could be a lot of interest out there in magazine articles on real home built street race cars. Um, and I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm out in left field, but the, the, the usual articles that you read in hot rod magazine or car craft or super Chevy or whatever it just don't get it for me i mean I'm i don't not even really... think people really buy magazines anymore it'd be all online that's what's hot i mean speed society you, you see an article on there you click on it and right. you just read it on your phone nobody really does paper anymore so i think more of an online magazine you not know? that there isn't a, a market for that but i don't know i just think the whole magazine thing is just burnt out i think it's at least the way they're doing it and there's a lot of advertising in it. So, I mean, that tells me there's got to be some money in doing it. But um, I don't know. So drop us a comment. Let us know what you think about maybe doing some magazine-style articles on the website for street race cars. Literally, home-built street race cars. I'm not talking about... Maybe some videos, too, to go with them. Yeah, that are maybe some videos. YouTube. You know, not all these guys want to be on camera. Not everybody wants to be in a video. Uh, some of them would rather just have a, an article written and some pictures and that's cool. Um, but let us know what you guys think about that. I, I really feel like there's a lot of interest in that out there. 
um, and not just in Ohio. I mean, we can go anywhere. We can go anywhere and and uh, do an article on a car. But you got to be real about it. Don't don't tell us you're a street racer and this. I mean, we pretty much know who street races. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to see. I mean, we pretty much know. So if you're don't start messaging us, wanting us to come out and and do an article on your street race car that you literally have never street raced. We're not going to do that. But um, let us know what you think in the comments. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think I think people would like it. I really do. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, share, do whatever you want with it. Uh, and we're out until next week. See you guys. Thanks for watching.